Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on the things that are above, not the things that are on the earth. All they could think about was Lazarus died. Stuff of the world, things of the world. This is what I see, this is what I know, this is what I've experienced. And in all of it tells me I have no hope. But we are not to put our faith in the things of this world, but then to the things that are above. Right? Christ Jesus, who sits at the right hand of God. And this is what he says. For you have died. You have died. Lazarus dead. You do her. Lazarus. My friend. Who, who's my friend? The sinner. For you have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears. Appears. Waiting for Jesus to come. We've been waiting four days. We buried him. And we've been waiting. Right? When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Lazarus, come out. <laughs> appeared with him in glory. While everybody else was weeping and gnashing their teeth without hope. Right? Now, we never hear of Lazarus or his life or his life style. But Jesus, in the chapter before, says, I am the good shepherd. And everyone who's mine knows my voice. And when my voice goes out, they respond to it. Because they know that's the voice of God. That's the voice of Dad. That's the voice of love. And everyone who doesn't belong to me will not respond to my voice. Because it would be a stranger's voice. Every one of them said they were dead. And Lord, if you'd have been here, he would have lived. Stranger's voice, weeping, gnashing of the teeth without hope. And they don't respond to that. But to my voice, the good shepherd, they listen. Lazarus, come out. And he did. Because that's my son. Whether you guys believed it or not, Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus Christ did not die for a righteous man or a good man or a man who had no sin. He died for the ungodly. Dead in transgression. Sin. Died for. And when Jesus appeared, his friend, the sinner, appeared with him in glory. For he responded to the love, the voice of God. He says, Put to death, therefore, that is earthly in you. That, that place that has no hope, put it to death. We have hope. They have hope. The ungodly, the unbeliever, the man who didn't make the prayer, the man who wasn't baptized, they have hope. And their hope is in the truth. Same with us. We, we believe in, in Jesus Christ. And it's not that I be, because I believe in Jesus Christ, I, I will be saved. I will be saved because I believe. It, 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 it's like, because I believe the truth. I know I will be saved. Because I believe that God said, I love you, Lazarus, one member of my body. And I heard it. I heard him cry for help. And that cry for help came from these unbelievers. 
Right? He didn't believe God loved him. And, and, and it's not about that. God chose the human race, the human beings, to be made in the image of God. And Jesus believed it. You are the light of the world. And what's keeping you from believing? You're the light of the world. Because when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and he believed it with all his heart, might, and soul, everybody looked around and said, yeah, bud, you are the light of the world. But they couldn't believe they had light in them. But their unbelief didn't take away from God's love or willingness to resurrect or to restore or to cure. He goes on to say, put to death sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covenantousness or jealousy, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. And, and this is what God wants to destroy, sexual immorality. I want to destroy that. Why? Because it prevents you from believing the truth. All right? It puts you in a place to believe your, your beloved brother is sick and dead without hope. So put that away so that you may believe in the truth. Where evil desires is God would never, and it is not God's desire that anyone would perish. Might be my desire to see some people perish, but it's not God's desire. So, so put away that evilness. Put away that slander. God's wrath is coming for those things. In these, you too once walked. When you were living in them. But now you must put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obstinence. Obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Do not lie. Seeing that you have to put off the old self with its practices and have to put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Right? We, we, they were slandering. Lazarus without even knowing they were slandering Lazarus. Oh Lord, if you had only been here, he would have lived. But Jesus, what's keeping you from believing? It's keeping you believing in my love for him. Your slander? Sexual immorality? Horrible talk? Malice? Revenge? Covenantousness? Jealousy? Because you're not receiving what, what they're receiving because you are dressed in rags and you don't have a suit. Is that keeping you from believing God loves you? What's stopping you? And if you put it all away, there's nothing left to stop you from believing in it. When you're standing there with God in his glory, like Lazarus, what, what, what now is stopping them from believing God loves them? His transgression, his death? There's nothing left. And many came to believe. In the image of its creator. Right? Who's created in the image of God? The human being. Not the believer, not this guy or that guy. They're, by no works can we be saved. It's a gift. A gift. I love you. What's going to stop me from believing that? I am made in the image of God. Right? Here, here, 
in the body of Christ, here in the true religion of God, here in heaven. Right? There's not a Greek, not one Greek, not one Jew. Neither circumcised or uncircumcised. Barbarian, there's no barbarians. There's no slaves, there's no free. But Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Right? As I have loved you. And here's the good news, guys. Not one is righteous. Not one is good. Not one is without sin. Not one seeks God. All have gone their own way. All. Not one. And yet, God gave Jesus as, as a sacrifice for the ungodly. Not one are godly. So that God could save all. <laughs> What's stopping us from believing the truth? Could it be a lie? A lie? Could it be the father of lies trying to prevent us from being, believing the truth? That's why we don't slander anybody else. We don't pick on them for being a worse sinner than I am a sinner, or me being better than them, for not one does good. No one, none of them sought God. Not one. So love one another as though you were loving yourself. Jesus died for the ungodly. Jesus is the friend of sinners. Can we be a friend of a sinner? Of the ungodly? Could I believe the ungodly have every right to God's throne? As the godly? Because only Jesus is godly. Only Jesus believed God that that you are the light of the world. He says, And above all things put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let peace, the peace of Christ, rule in your hearts, which indeed you were called in one body. One body. One death, once and for all. By one man, all have sinned. And by one man, all will be saved. You don't have to say the sinner prayer. All I have to do is find the compassion and the love within my own heart to believe God's word. God's word is, I love you. And I have to believe that. Not based upon your works or what you're doing or how, how bad or willingness you are to bow down or how many times you've been baptized. I just got to believe it. And when I believe it, there, what's going to hold me back from loving you you as though you were a part of my body. Jesus says, I thank you, God. 
You have heard me. Heard him say what? Man, he didn't say anything. God heard the Spirit of Christ living in Lazarus. And whatever is spoken in secret places will be brought out into the open so that all may see God's glory. And God will repay you there. And we are all one body, one member in that body, the body of Christ. All of us. All of us. And, and sure, not all of us can be the eyeball or the ears or the mouth. But that doesn't mean we're not all a member in this body. And if, even if my hand said to my foot, hey foot, we don't need you anymore. Does it, does it make my foot any less? My foot? still is there. Or the ear say to the eye, eye, we don't need you anymore. But does it make the eye any less a part of the body? And that's where we need to be today. We don't need to worry about being raptured <coughs> or focused on what's wrong with the world or What's wrong with going on or, or what's wrong with God's plan? What we need to do is believe. Faith. Faith. Jesus says, if you ask me anything and it's within the will of God, I will do it. And, and, and Jesus says, here, here, let me tell you what God's will is. God's will is that no one perish. And if you think somebody's going to perish, and you're struggling with doubt or faith, you could say, God, Father, I thank you that you've always heard me. Could you show Johnny compassion? Could you prove to me, Father, that you love Johnny in the same way you love me. By healing Johnny. Rising Johnny back to life. And the good news is if Jesus Christ rose back to life and is seating at the right hand of God. So are we. So are we. One body. One flesh. One spirit given to the world to save all men. Let us put our faith in the truth. In the truth. See you next time. <laughs>